Hello everyone and welcome back to Commonwealth Realm. It's the day we've all been waiting for, our brutally honest review of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Before we get into the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe along with that notification bell to support the channel on our way to 250,000 subscribers. Oh, and by the way, this review is spoiler free. I'm going to be reviewing this not only as a Pokemon game, but a Switch AAA $60 title. So without any further ado, let's get into it. If I were to describe Pokemon Sword and Shield in one word, then it would be inconsistent. It has been a long time since I've been this conflicted with any video game. Since there is so much I love and feel is great about Sword and Shield, and at the same time so much that I feel needed better structure, more polishing, or is simply outdated for a full HD experience. Can I also just say how great it is to finally have a Pokemon mainline game on a home console system? Oh, okay, it's a hybrid too, but you get the point. It was actually a very surreal experience to relax on my bed with Pokemon on the big screen. That being said, the expectations were set high as it reminded me that it again is the first console experience for a mainline game in the series. As I started playing the game, it seemed like a pretty standard Pokemon experience. You start off in your home with your mum present and your rival being introduced shortly thereafter. As people started speaking, I was immediately amazed at the Britishisms, as they're so called in this review. I'm referring to words such as mum, telly, and chinwag, all of which are British localizations and words which really stand out in a world of highly Americanized media. This was, and still is, very refreshing. These Britishisms continued into the smallest things like town names such as Wedgehurst and Holbury. In terms of making it feel like a British experience, the localization team have done amazingly well. I can totally see these being the real names of towns in the UK. In addition, the architecture is extremely British too. I could also envision some of these towns just being there in real life, these buildings being with them, with the exception of magical Pokemon healing centers, which no UK government would ever fund. Oh well, at least we have the NHS. For now. Anyway, speaking of Pokemon centers, I really like the new updated design and interior. It combines Pokemarts, name raters, and of course, the traditional healing nurse. Furthermore, the healing animation itself is actually really cool to watch, and it definitely stands out in terms of previous titles, as they just played a sound effect and did a minor, well, non-animation. The gyms are also a clear reference to the Premier League here in the UK, with their chairman looking like, well, how a chairman of the Premier League would do. The uniforms are straight out of a football match, and the fans chanting is extremely similar to how fans would do so in a football stadium. As it so happens, we are quite big on our football here in the UK, so the reference is not lost, further adding to the Britishness. They have really exceeded my expectations. The only thing uh, that I would really complain about is the sky outside of the wild area is always blue in the game, which is pretty inaccurate since our skies are always overcast and grey, although I will let it slide just this once. Moving on, I'll now cover the graphics and performance of the game, since technically it's the first thing we see. Sword and Shield is a mixed bag in this aspect, as on one hand the game has moments looking absolutely beautiful, and on the other it really struggles to impress. What I mean by this is that we often see textures that are extremely low quality, a large amount of rendering pop-in, often leading to characters appearing out of nowhere, and a great deal of FPS drops. That is not to say that the game is not 100% visually unappealing, because there are some places that do just look… amazing. However, the online complaints about graphics including pixelated battle backgrounds, lazy shadows, undetailed grass and trees, which often looks pixelated, seem to be accurate. Trees also fall victim to the aforementioned render distance pop-in. Additionally, the complaint regarding animation seemed to be both true and untrue. What I mean by this is that much like the graphical fidelity of the game, this is also a mixed bag, going back to the inconsistency I mentioned at the beginning of the review. With some moves such as Wooloo's Tackle being quite expressive for that individual Pokemon, and other moves such as Double Kick being a pathetic double hop. Definitely not what we were promised by Game Freak, that is for sure. There is also a scene in the game when you eventually encounter the legendary Pokemon, and it simply turns by sliding in place. That is not acceptable. We mentioned these online complaints as we wanted to see if they were true or just fans looking to hate. Regrettably, a lot of the complaints were true. Quite frankly, Game Freak's reasoning of higher graphical fidelity, animations and expressions are simply untrue. 
This is important, as it was their main justification of removing a large, large amount of Pokemon that were not included in this generation. There is no excuse for this, and we are sincerely disappointed that Game Freak has not made good on their claims and promises. Regardless of this, the game is tolerable in terms of graphics if you can deal with FPS drops at times, poorer textures, and coping with the previously mentioned pop-in due to render distance limitations. We are perplexed at these graphical and performance issues, as we know the Switch is capable of so much more, as we see in Breath of the Wild. It is my opinion that the game has, to a certain degree, been rushed in order to meet the Christmas release market. With any luck, some graphical issues should be patched, but for a day one launch, I find this to be rather disappointing, especially given how Game Freak said they were going to make this a real visual treat. Ordinarily, graphics are not a very important part of a Pokemon game, but when the company creating the game decides to insist that this game will have better animations and expressions of Pokemon, compounded by the fact that this is the most powerful system Pokemon has ever ran on, I feel like there was a massive missed opportunity to make this game look visually very special. Again, I reiterate and want to make this clear, the game will do just fine if you're not looking for these issues most of the time, but the visual problem arises when you stop taking time to look at detail or lack thereof. I think the Switch is clearly capable of doing better, as shown by other titles on the console. Regardless, I think we've spoken enough about graphics and performance. This can be a subjective thing, and with everything in this review, this is merely my opinion. The music in Sword and Shield, as in many Pokemon games, is nothing short of awesome. The style has a very modern tinge to it, and gym battles sound like they could be ripped straight from a techno nightclub for goodness sake. It is straight up fire, even including some epic fan chanting from the stadium crowd. However, the music and its style constantly change to suit the mood. From foggy forests, battling against your rivals, all the way to the final goal, the music has that distinct Pokemon flavor that never fails to impress. I even got creeped out, legitimately, by one of the tracks in the game. That's a good sign. Keeping this brief as we want to keep this review spoiler free, we felt the story was a bit lackluster this time around. Nothing interesting seems to happen until you reach later stages in the game and, overall, it didn't really push the already established boundaries and expectations of previous Pokemon titles. If you can push through the beginning of the game in its rather slow, tutorial-filled pacing, you will uncover a fair bit of in-world story that will likely pique a decent degree of interest for the average fan. We still don't like Team Yell, though. They suck. Let me go on record and say that this game is easy, ridiculously so. It is literally baby's first Pokemon. You're constantly getting and finding items like revives, super potions, and generally anything that you can use to cheat your opponent out of a rightfully earned victory over you. I say this as a fan of Pokemon since Crystal. This game is pathetically easy to win. We even know of someone who obtained a Gyarados with leftovers before the first gym. I personally just kept visiting the wild area until I found a strong Pokemon and easily tanked through the first gym battle and beyond. The beginning of the game drags on seemingly forever, just as bad as Sun and Moon, if not worse. Why you can, on occasion, choose to inform the tutorial giver that you already know the information on whatever topic they're explaining to you, it doesn't actually seem to do much. I selected the constant I know option and was still subject to constant information barrages on stuff I already knew. Hop was my rival, not in the Pokemon sense of the word, but in the sense of being the player. He was there, every moment, every time, always there to lock me into a forced cutscene whenever virtually any progress was made. I went to bed last night, and he was my sleep paralysis demon. I couldn't move, I couldn't skip his dialogue. <clears throat> okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit there, but the hand-holding and cutscenes are ridiculous in this game. The sooner you skip them, the better. Other areas of gameplay? Well, it's Pokemon. I got the genuine Pokemon battling experience that we all know and love. Some battles were, rarely, genuinely challenging, although not enough to have me leave and train new Pokemon to defeat my opponents. Dynamaxing is also super fun, and I could actually feel the weight of my attacks as I flat out nuked my enemy. Gameplay, as you'll notice as a theme throughout this video, is yet another mixed bag. It doesn't really shine or stand out beyond what the series has already established, it kind of feels like a bit of a missed opportunity, if I'm being honest. Now, in terms of in-game content, well, the wild area is great, a welcomed addition to the Pokemon universe. Just the novelty of having a rotatable camera and a free roam area with roaming Pokemon for the first time was really enjoyable, but then made me wonder why it took them this long to get it into a title. 
Regardless, whilst we have great additions like Dynamaxing, which is surprisingly fun as I mentioned, Pokemon Camp, Pokemon Jobs, and other such things which we don't want to spoil, we are disappointed by the Pokemon cut from the game. My competitive team from Sun and Moon is effectively gone, rest in peace Crobat, and not seeing some of my favourites in the game was genuinely saddening. Unfortunately, as you've likely heard, Game Freak's reasoning of higher quality animations as a justification for not adding in all Pokemon was simply untrue, as we have discussed previously in the video. We aren't going to get into that too much though, we just wanted to briefly touch upon it. Regardless, if the gut Pokemon are not a bother to you, this is effectively a non-issue. However, if it is an issue to you, well, you'll notice their absence. A lot. You'll constantly be reminded too. Otherwise, you'll find that Sword and Shield has its own fair share of content to offer, bringing some unique, never-before-seen activities and quirks to the table that most fans are sure to enjoy, even if they only use them once. Pokemon Sword and Shield are, no doubt, the most divisive games in the entire series so far. Let's be real about that. Game Freak has made a lot of mistakes with their PR and execution of these games. There are a lot of things that had us just scratching our heads. Why do we need an in-game item to adjust the volume options? Why is XP share always on? Why can't I catch Pokemon of a certain level without a gym badge? Why is the game so unoptimized and plagued with graphical issues? All of these questions served as a source of frustration for me as I went through the game. As I said in the beginning of the video, the word to describe this game is inconsistency. The game has brilliant, amazing moments that really stand out, only to be squashed by something else. It's never consistent, always going up and down in terms of quality and enjoyment. It almost lures you in, sets your hopes high, and flat out drops them. However, even in the face of constant negatives being found, I did find pockets of genuine fun and enjoyment here and there. Sometimes I lost myself in the experience, forgetting all about the shortcomings of the title and zoning out. However, when the zoning out ended, it was particularly disheartening. In the beginning of the video, I said I'd be reviewing this not only as a Pokemon game, but also as a AAA $60 title for the Nintendo Switch. This is still the case. When I look at other games like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, I am afraid Pokemon Sword and Shield simply don't stand up to them. The bar has been set and these games miss it. At times, a fun and enjoyable experience with charming style and music, but also a highly troubled pair of games, I award Pokemon Sword and Shield Game Freak's foray into the mainline console scene of Nintendo simply did not meet the majority of reasonable fan expectations. Their lack of ambition, problematic decision-making, and outright lies in some cases has genuinely cost them a lot of love and trust from their longtime fans. While some people can find an enjoyable experience here, I don't personally think it's worth $60. For now, let's wrap things up. Oh, and before we forget, we've got a new, updated Pokemon Timeline video coming out tomorrow on Friday. We've scoured the new lore and chronological information from Sword and Shield and updated our already in-depth timeline for the latest installment be sure to check it out. As usual, a big shout out to our Royal Producers Kenyatta Ali and Bradley Carriage. We are only able to make these videos with the support of our fans and we appreciate every view we get. If you enjoyed this review and want to support us in our future work, please be sure to like the video, subscribe and click that notification bell to never miss a video from us when they're ready and released. If you want to go even further, why not check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash commonrealm and join the many others in helping us out. Thank you so much for watching. Until we meet again, we'll see you all next time on Commonwealth Realm.